Hi, CLS community. My name is Rindy Devanji, and I'm an associate researcher at Foundry 10. Foundry 10 is an education research organization with a philanthropic focus on expanding the way people think about learning and creating direct value for youth. I'm here today to share some findings with you from a recent study we've conducted investigating the use and value of adaptive learning technologies in K-12 education. Uh, you may be wondering, first and foremost, what is an adaptive learning technology? There was no operational definition of an ALT, adaptive learning technology, when we embarked on this study. And so we had to create one for ourselves. And we did that by reviewing a number of different tools that are on the market that um, market themselves as adaptive. And we also reviewed the literature on adaptive learning technologies to kind of try and find some common themes of what constitutes adaptivity. And um, we found that there are three main functions that adaptive technologies uh, perform, and that is adaptive assessments, adaptive instruction, and adaptive feedback. And basically, that just means that the assessments, the instruction, and the feedback are customized according to student input. Um, and you may also be wondering where this discussion fits in with all of the current conversation around AI and education. ALTs are one of the many AI-based technologies that are already prevalent in many K-12 schools across the US, and their prevalence really picked up during pandemic-related remote learning but despite their commonality, there's been very little research done to investigate the value that these tools provide learners and teachers when they're embedded in the classroom. And um, any of the research that has been produced has mostly been done by the ed tech companies that create these tools. And so our research team at Foundry 10 wanted to investigate from the perspective of the users, teachers, the designers, ed tech developers, and the folks who support the implementation, teacher support professionals, what their perspectives are when these tools are in the classroom. And so we did that by conducting semi-structured interviews with teachers, teacher support professionals, tech coaches, tech implementation specialists, ed ed teacher educators. Um, and then we also spoke with ed tech developers and we also spoke with uh, teacher developers, which was a category that emerged through uh, talking to our stakeholders. Um, and these were folks who used to work as classroom teachers and have transitioned into ed tech roles and are applying their teaching knowledge into the design of adaptive learning technologies, which was exciting uh, to talk to them. But during our interviews, um, we conducted hour long interviews with uh, these folks and we collected their transcripts, we analyzed them using thematic analysis, and we developed themes to showcase how various ALT design features and implementation models create advantages and challenges in K-12 classrooms. And these themes were then used to develop recommendations for the use, the development, and the implementation of these tools uh, in K-12 classrooms. I'll be sharing all of that with you today. And first, I'd like to walk you through the major themes that came up as we examined the advantages and challenges that ALTs create in classrooms. The first theme is around learning management. The second theme is around student engagement, and the third theme is around implementation. So as we analyzed transcripts, we saw a lot of stuff come out about how ALTs support teachers' learning management. And most of that support came through learning content features that are embedded within the tool and the data features that are embedded within the tool. And at the same time, we heard that while those things are beneficial and support teachers' learning management, there are issues with the data type, the data quality, and the data presentation that kind of um, mitigate some of those advantages. And I'll be talking through each of those today. So when we're talking about adaptive learning content supporting teachers' um, learning management. So teachers told us that the ALT learning content supported their day-to-day -day practice because they were a source of reliably tailored and quality learning content. So it made it gave teachers quick and easy access to learning materials for their instruction, for homework, for assessments. Um, they weren't constantly having to create worksheets to um, give kids skill building or further practice on certain concepts that they had just taught. And then teachers were also able to trust that the content wasn't just easily accessible, but that it was standards aligned as well. And then another advantage that came out of using that uh, adaptive learning content was that teachers were then able to use in-tool grading systems to automatically grade students' work. So they were able to, you know, quickly give good content and quickly get feedback from that content, which kind of leads to the second advantage for learning management, which was adaptive learning data. 
So data provided by ALT's teacher said that it served as a formative assessment, which could be used to guide teachers' instruction. And um, ALT's could collect quick and consistent behavior and diagnostic insights and bring teachers' attention to the small learning changes that happen day to day for students and allow teachers to easily communicate that growth back with students. And so stakeholders in their study also highlighted how ALT data can be used um, to quickly create differentiated learning groups uh, to better direct teachers' time and attention to the individual needs of all the students in the classroom. Despite these advantages for teachers learning, for teachers learning management, uh, the data features of ALTs didn't always lead to quick insights and or saved time for teachers. Teachers reported issues with the type, quality, and presentation of the data in ALTs and said that it limited its overall usability for their learning management. Uh, to, uh, to elaborate on the issues with the type of data um, and the issues that teachers had with that, teachers said that the data reported by ALTs doesn't always align with their grading approaches. Some tools only provide information on students' final answers, um, and this meant that teachers could not use the data to evaluate the steps taken by students to arrive at their responses. And when discussing data quality, teachers shared that ALT data can only be reliable if students are engaging with the tool in an appropriate way. Variations in how students engage with the platform and respond to questions could, ne could negatively impact the suggested learning trajectory um, and the resulting learning data received by teachers. And students' appropriate engagement can be impacted by a number of factors. Um, the tool's gamification and behavior tracking features might incentivize speed over thoughtful, thoughtful problem solving. That was an issue brought up by an ed tech pro professional who spoke with us. And um, these concerns were also kind of exacerbated during pandemic-related le remote learning when teachers didn't always know if the learning data that they were receiving was an accurate um, measurement of students learning because they weren't oh, sure if students were relying on um, external sources when taking assessments within ALTs or doing completing homework in ALTs or if they were getting external help from um, teachers or uh, from parents or siblings. And so um, these data quality concerns prevented teachers from utilizing ALT data without additional data triangulation and verification steps, which adds obviously additional workload for teachers and doesn't effectively support efficient learning management. And then uh, when we get to interpreting data, teachers said that the amount of data reported by ALTs can be overwhelming and it's not always organized in a way that enables them to gather quick insights. So uh, teachers also suggested that, you know, they have ALT data, but they also have like hundreds of other sources of data, uh, whether that's from like the worksheets that they're giving out or, you know, uh, student social emotional assessments but they struggled with consolidating, consolidating the data that they were getting from ALTs with uh, data from other sources. And also our teacher support professionals and ed tech professionals that we spoke to both noted that they had often seen or heard of teachers struggling to effectively draw uh, conclusions and analyze the data from the tool. And they felt that teachers didn't always have the adequate support that they needed to um, build data literacy skills, which made it more difficult for them to capitalize on ALT data reports for learning management. So what does this all mean for the folks who use these tools, design these tools, and support their implementation? I have some recommendations for you. Um, the first recommendation is really, uh, isn't really coming from the advantages and challenges, but is coming from the literature more. When we were trying to figure out the value of adaptive learning technologies, a lot of that like value evaluation comes from whether or not these tools support students' academic outcomes and achieving those academic outcomes. But um, what we saw in the discussion with these stakeholders was that um, there's a more expansive evaluation of these tools. Uh, and so our recommendation is for all stakeholders to consider the benefits of ALTs, not just for students, but also for managing teachers' administrative tasks. And I'll highlight a participant quote that showcases what this means. Um, so teachers noted that by allowing for more efficient learning management, ALTs truly provide value by giving them more time to focus on developing approaches for deepening student learning outside of the platform. These findings uh, build on related research in recognizing that stakeholders both inside and outside of the classroom think expansively and consider intermediate factors besides students' academic outcomes when assessing the value of technologies 
that they're bringing into the classroom. Our next recommendation is for teachers and is based on the data concerns cited by participants in our study. Participants noted that some ALT learning management efficiencies are undermined by concerns around how the data tools grade, collect data on student learning and present that learning data back to teachers. Um, for example, what this ed tech professional is saying is that um, is really speaking to the data reliability concerns of when younger students are engaging with the platform and they might be stuck, they will put in guesswork and guesswork leads to a uh, flawed learning trajectory. Um, this teacher support professional also noted the concerns about maybe external help um, during the pandemic uh, when students were using these tools leading to flawed learning trajectories and needing um, additional data verification steps to really know whether or not the learning trajectory and the data that they're getting back from the ALT is true. So while these things are frustrating, these quotes highlight teachers' larger concern with the data and um, the learning trajectories in the platform. And this is a limitation that teachers should be aware of when they're using these tools and they should continue to practice data triangulation and verification to validate the data from ALTs with other diagnostic data sources to make informed decisions about student learning and their teaching practices. So basically we cannot rely on these to be the sole assessment of student learning as much as we would like to and sometimes these tools are marketed as. To address the learning management concerns, um, these developers can create some different features in the tool or uh, change the design of the tool in some way as well. So for example, developers can create content that enables students to demonstrate the process behind their responses rather than just um, relying on final responses in the tool. And um, this can help make the, the process visible to teachers and rather than relying on students inputting like a singular correct answer without any context, it, uh, which you know can create some issues, which we discussed, but I wanted to highlight some teacher quotes that show this. Um, this teacher is saying that, you know, the challenge with these platforms is that they're only looking for the right answer. You can't uh, assess the process. And sometimes the answer that's input by students is, uh, has a computational, simple computational error, which can actually bring teachers' attention to uh, students' conceptual understanding and where there might be uh, some flaws in that and where they can correct students. And um, it may even just be like a error in pushing a button, but all of a sudden, because you input the wrong information, now you have a totally different learning trajectory. And so instead, developers can design grading algorithms to better align with teachers' own grading approaches, like giving credit for partial answers, um, which can build teachers' trust in the system and assess the system's assessment of students' uh, conceptual understanding. And then another way is to contextualize student scores using metadata. Um, there's some research showing that um, providing student response times and guessing behaviors can help to flag when um, maybe student engagement is flawed and therefore the input is flawed and the learning trajectory is flawed. And so uh, looking at that metadata or giving teachers access to some of that metadata to uh, look at can help um, address some of teachers' ALT data reliability concerns. And then further, teacher st stakeholders also express frustration that they're unable to intervene when they do observe a mismatch uh, between the student's proficiency and the content suggested by the technology. And developers should consider giving teachers more options to manage, it, manage the trajectory of students in the tool. And maybe this can even support teacher autonomy um, by giving them a little bit more control over some of the things that are suggested to students in the tool. So along with these changes to the design of the tools themselves, our findings also suggest a need for increased professional development opportunities for teachers. Teachers described being overwhelmed with the amount of data that they were reviewing um, and the presentation of that data, like this teacher who just was very real with us and said they have over 200 kids now and it's just not humanly possible to review all of the data unless it's given in a simple, quick, easy to read way without a lot of clicks. And so to address this challenge, developers can provide in-tool training to help teachers interpret student data and prepare them to make informed instructional decisions with that data. They can also tailor data visualizations to be accessible for teachers with, daring, with varying data literacy levels. 
Also, both stakeholder groups, teacher support professionals and ed tech professionals noted how they had often seen or heard of teachers struggling to effectively analyze or draw conclusions from data. Um, like this teacher support professional uh, who was just saying that if they can't analyze it, how can they possibly like inform their instruction with that data? And so um, participants are highlighting the need for better support and better opportunities for teachers to build these data literacy skills and um, capitalize on some of the data reports for their learning management. And so to address this, uh, we're calling on teacher educators, teacher implementation specialists, school administrators, and ed tech coaches to consider crafting professional development opportunities that better prepare teachers to interpret the data and um, use it to inform their instruction. So moving on to the theme of student engagement, across the interviews, stakeholders reported that features of ALTs like data reports, timely feedback, self-paced instruction, and gamified elements created value for students by enhancing their awareness of their own learning and supporting students' engagement with the material. But at the same time, some of those same features that were driving engagement, um, stakeholders pointed to maybe uh, a mismatch in their design and leading to flawed engagement um, and maybe becoming a distraction from learning. So to start with the advantages, uh, teachers reported that um, ALTs provide value by allowing students to monitor and track their own progress over time. And this personalized, feed, be, personalized feedback encourages students to become more aware and active participants in their own learning. And all stakeholder groups also described how that can be really fun um, or how different features of the adaptive learning technologies can be really fun. There were animations and games and interactive elements, which um, stakeholders reported helped motivate students and allow them to have fun while moving through the learning content. So this pairing of being able to track and self-pace and um, understand and see data yourself while also engaging with games and interactive elements, like both of those coming together really enhance student engagement and student awareness of their own learning. Um, although teachers described these benefits of the games and the interactive elements, Teacher support professionals and ed tech professionals were both concerned about how some of the tools used rewards like coins to incentivize students instead of providing meaningful feedback. Uh, teacher support and ed tech participants expressed that although some of these features in moderation can build student engagement in ways that support learning, an excessive number of gamified tasks may actually distract students from their primary learning goals. So what does this mean uh, for the folks who design and use and implement these tools. First and foremost, it's important for teachers to support students in actually understanding and interpreting ALT's learning pathways and data reports and scores. It's great that students are able to, you know, manage and track their own learning, but there's this concern of like, should students just be left to their own devices to do that? And no, uh, but it is an opportunity for teachers to engage with students about that data. like see the progress reports and find uh, time to um, actually discuss that progress. And so a, t a series of teachers in our study kind of showed how this can be done with ALT data and learning reports, and I'm going to highlight some of their quotes. Um, so this teacher shared how they appreciated that the learning data isn't just visible to them, but that it's also shared back with their teachers, and that they felt that this built their student awareness of uh, their own learning. Another teacher shared that the learning data paired with self Pacing features enabled students to navigate their learning roadblocks on their own and encouraged students to direct their own learning by revisiting concepts that they needed to build more practice on or continue to build new skills without necessarily needing direction from the teacher to do that. But this quote kind of summarized how both of those benefits uh, then translated into empowerment for, for students themselves, that they were able to take that information take this feeling of being able to conduct uh, their own learning or overcome roadblocks and advocate for themselves in their own learning. And so um, we're seeing here that that data paired with the actual agency to go about and control your own learning settings actually empowered students and helped facilitate productive teacher student interactions where they could um, advocate for themselves. So supporting students in making sense of the data in the tool, regularly reviewing the progress with them and encouraging self-pacing using the data to inform their next steps can be very effective, can be a very effective way of using ALTs for teachers. 
Teachers also mentioned that self-paced learning features of ALTs provide students with some privacy in their work, which can help foster student comfort with making mistakes or taking learning risks. Um, to paraphrase this quote from a teacher support professional, students are able to focus on their own learning without being distracted by or comparing themselves to others. Since the system provides this individualized learning environment where students can feel more free to experiment or fail without peer judgment, teachers should consider how they can help foster that safety and privacy in their classroom by leveraging the insights gained by ALTs um, to provide continue to provide students with discrete personalized feedback. Um, and there was also consensus in our study that ALTs are engaging by design. EdTech developers in our study highlighted particular design features like interactive cartoon characters that contribute to high engagement. Um, teachers were especially appreciative of that gamification engagement during remote learning when it was challenging to engage students and provide an enjoyable learning experience. So our suggestion for teachers who continue to teach in remote, hybrid, and blended learning uh, settings is, and are struggling with engagement, is to consider incorporating ALTs for, for student engagement purposes. Um, stakeholders also brought up a particular issue that limit these benefits, like the design and interactive elements that are too childish or pedantic or improperly gamified, um, which can run the risk of disengaging learners and prompting a focus on speed and rewards over gaining a conceptual understanding of the material. So that's something to be wary of for teachers who are going to be including these tools specifically for engagement is to make sure that, that in, those engagement features actually match the level, the competency level, the um, developmental level of the students that you're working with. Like, so the, uh, this ed tech professional who actually showed that um, that the avatars may be distracting um, and another teacher who kind of expanded on this and uh, wanted to ensure that the activities and user interface are appropriately designed for the intended age range. Um, there was an example of when it was too high of a level and too childish of a level. So designing appropriately for the grade grade and age of the students is extremely important. Um, and so developers should consider limiting gamification features to those that will actively support students' engagement in learning content and ensure that activities and user interfaces are appropriately designed for the intended student age range. The final theme of our study focused on the implementation of ALTs. This theme did not include any advantages, but a discussion on differing stakeholder expectations around the implementation purpose of ALTs and a lack of ALT training and integration support for teachers, which creates a number of barriers for ALT implementation in classrooms. So teacher perspectives highlighted a gap in stakeholder expectations for the tool and the reality of its implementation. Teachers discussed how ed tech companies and school administrators often present ALTs as a comprehensive solution for managing instruction and student learning. Teachers also discussed the impl implications of this disconnect between the expectations for ALTs and teachers' yeah. real experiences with them. For example, one ed tech participant with teaching experience explained that the issues arise, there are issues that arise when um, the use of ALTs is, is mandated without teacher buy-in. So with this in mind, we developed some recommendations for teacher support professionals and ed tech developers. Overall, teachers described experiencing challenges implementing ALTs when they had differing expectations for the use and purpose of ALTs compared to administrators. Um, as one teacher explained, administrators or tech developers hopes for the tool don't match up with teachers' experiences in the classroom, like this teacher, uh, that it is not something that comes in and fixes everything. All stakeholder groups mentioned experiences how this lack of buying can impact implementation and um, use, leads to the tool not being used for the appropriate amount of time for the appropriate kinds of instruction and with teachers monitoring student progress and using the data to inform their pedagogy. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, this ed tech professional who basically suggested that cascade of a lack of teacher buy-in leading to a lack of fidelity in the use of the tool. These findings suggest that better alignment is needed between teachers and other ed tech and education stakeholders around the role and value of ALTs. Some stakeholders in education and ed tech fields have high expectations for the potential benefits of ALTs for teachers and students, and even consider them a one-stop shop for classroom teaching. 
Um, however, our findings suggest that teachers who have experience with ALTs and have implemented them in their classroom tend to have a more moderate expectation for their usefulness and view ALTs as helpful, but a limited supplement to their own teaching practices. Um, recognizing these discrepancies and listening to teachers' perspectives would help other stakeholders such as edtech developers and teacher support staff focus their efforts on maximizing features and implementation models that actually work best in the classroom instead of trying to meet teachers' every need with a singular tool. I'd like to thank my co-investigators, Sam Binman, Ali Tung, Kat Chen, and Lisa Castaneda for their support in this research. I'd also like to thank you for listening to this talk and please feel free to reach out to me at Ridley at Foundry 10 if you have any questions or would like to talk more about this research. Thank you very much for attending. Have a great day.